Why are you all so, this is why y'all don't win in life. So much inner violence. You should be high-fiving each other. You should be saying things like, hey, be like, you know, good job, buddy. Those five strands of hair are definitely slaying today. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. We're on season two, episode seven, called Doomed to Die. Wow, I feel like this episode is gonna be super fun. So last episode, we had a few things happen. We had the two Hobbit girls decide that they're gonna face the Dark Wizard because they don't wanna endanger the other Hobbits. We had the Wizard deciding to either choose a staff so he can finally fight um, against the people he has to fight up against eventually, or go and rescue the Hobbits. And we had, unfortunately, the assault on Oregion has started. By the time that um, Galadriel realized what was going on, by the time Galadriel realized what was going on, it was far too late. Poor Elrond moved as fast as he could, but he didn't get back in time in order to get the Elven army to at least try to go to Oregion. And we see that Sauron is just having too much fun with these people, playing them like a puppet, playing them like the master puppet master that he is. He's got poor uh, Celebrimbor working to the bone, not realizing that the city is falling down around him. So yeah, a lot going on, crazy stuff about to ensue, and I'm ready to jump in and find out how bad it's gonna be. So let's jump in, but just before I do, just a reminder that if you'd like to be in the know when I drop these episodes, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. All right, that out of the way, guys, let's get into the episode right now. Oh, this is quite peaceful. Is this another place or have we done a flashback? Oh, we're still inside of Celebrimbor's delusion. Damn, Sauron is working overtime. I feel though, I really do feel for Celebrimbor. He's gonna be sick when the reality hits him. He's gonna be sick. The way his hubris was bastardized. Damn, we're almost done. Hmm. What are you recognizing? Is it missing a jewel? Oh, look, lunch. I jest. Have you fallen? Mm-hmm. The floor is hardly the place for the greatest. His mind keeps Smith. trying to break through the glamour. Poor guy. Missing a, a... Mm-hmm. You know how forgetful you can be. So I guess when Sauron gets a bit distracted or tired, the illusion falters a bit. I trust you are not feeling overwhelmed again. He's so patronizing. When the world is still, then the ideas <laughs> can flow freely. The fact that it is so far from still. How fares your progress? Hmm, go on to what really matters to Sauron. He could care less about your clarity. I have so enjoyed our time together. You don't even know what the word enjoyment means. A pity. Is it not? You are a twisted SOB, Sauron. The way you are playing with these folk. Can a stray fireball hit this guy in the face? I know he's just gonna be able to like move it with his hand, but come on. Elf, orc, whatever you are. He says the river will protect us. Every moment we remain idle, more elves die. We and y'all believe something. this? And that is why we are not going to obey him. I am taking command of our defenses. I'm going to make sure you're all dead. Celebrimbor's mind is gone. We are alone. Anyways, run along. Look at her. Look at her. I know he's repulsed. He cannot stand her. You have proven your quality. The kind of girls he likes are like Galadriel. He likes girls with a little bit of, just a little bit of sense. Why are you insulting each other? This is not the way to uplift each other, you know? The whole world already thinks you're ugly. You ain't gotta talk to each other like that. Prepare for ground assault. Ground assault? From across the river? Yes! Clearly, your little haven is not a haven anymore at this point. I mean, I know he's not trying to help them. He's just trying to make it faster. Is he trying to cause an avalanche? Is that what's going on? That's 
That will take out the last of the city. They're damming the river. Ah. Oh. So what happens if we dam the river? Everyone just dies of dehydration? Prepare for ground assault! Prepare for evacuation! Run! Run! Aren't you? You're a little bit late, friend, and I don't think there's much you can do at this point. Are the jewels necessary? I feel like that's unnecessary adornment when we're in a time crunch. This mouse is trying to tell you, what? We dying in here! Follow the rat! Actually, never mind. It's too late. Is he sensing that something's wrong? That we delay costs us unthinkable wealth. And that's all that matters? Not lives? Okay. Here they come. Oh, such a badass, I love it. All right. Dwarf fight! Huh? We stand with you. Yay. Down your axes. You realize the king's lost his complete nut? There's an elf outside once your ear. We'll have to do it quietly. This particular elf has been banished from all dwarves. Elrond? Lands. Yay, friend! And besides, what's your dad gonna do about it? He's old. I mean, I guess that rings a bit. Giving him a little bit of extra strength. My heart sings to see you, old friend. Sweet. We don't have time for this. Everything's falling apart. You, tidal hair, that flowery tongue, flagpole. Tidal, tidal hair. hair. Mm -hmm. That is, that's a new one. That's what I'm calling myself from now on. I've got curly hair too. I know I asked too much of you, Dorin, but I need your axe, old friend. I need it now. Can I overthrow my dad first? He's trying to wake up Balrog. It's a whole situation. Got a little bit of ethnic beat going on, you know? I'm not on their side, but the music's kind of hitting. Y'all ain't got no mages? Y'all ain't got nobody with some, some magic? I wouldn't want to do like the heavy stuff of Strutman, but I would absolutely love to do like the fall stuff, like when you get shot, like, Ugh. I think I'd be good at it. Whose face is that? Why would you put your own heads on a sp Say what you want about Adar. The man does know how to plan. And while I'm never gonna necessarily be like team orc per se, I gotta say like the underestimation, the elves hubris is part of why they're in this position. They've always just thought no one could rise against them. Wait for what? Same mouse, moving the exact same way. Captivating. It is a pattern. Yep. Repeating itself at intervals throughout the day. And mm. there is more. We would appear to have all the time that we need. Because time doesn't pass. You sought peace. I gave it to you. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever this is, this is hardly a gift. Just set him on fire, please. You welcomed my instruction. You practically begged for it. Now uh, a mouse scurries by and you fly to pieces. You let him gaslight, gaslight you, friend? No emissary of the Valar would do this. You figuring this out now? So sad. I want the nine! No! <laughs> Woo! That was kind of hot, Calibrimbo. The hottest thing you've done all season. Ain't gonna help you at this point, though. Yeah, this isn't gonna make you feel much better. And you've already pretty much finished the ring, so. <sighs> feel for you, bro. Sucks to be toyed with. Wow, you look awful. As you would though, have you even ate or slept in days? Toss yourself into the fire. That's crazy magic that he kept <laughs> all of that. Even the pain you felt from clearly being injured. Damn, Sauron! Why are you evil, bruh? What, what, is, what is this? What is it? No lesson. More lasting than this. So that's his poison. Requires sacrifice. 
Oh, his blood. Ew, can I wash? Yuck, hepatitis. I have many names. Oh, here we go, monologuing. I can't fully blame you, I mean, to an extent. Oh, okay, well, that was the end of Calabrimbo's story. Damn. But yeah, I really can't blame him. I mean, on the one hand, Sauron absolutely played his hubris and the arrogance that he had about, you know, being an artisan, but obviously no one deserves to be manipulated like that. But like I said, the magic for him to keep Sauron or keep Calabrimbor completely in the dark? To blot out his pain? That's insane. Oof, doggy, I'm sorry, they're gone. To force me to forge the rings, he put me in some kind of a prison, a prison of the mind, but I'm out. Distracted by the seed, so he forgot the ruby and the mouse. The same mouse. And you sound crazy. I'm so sorry, Kelly. You must Moore. believe me. She doesn't. She wants the D that she'll never get. <laughs> Damn, they've got time to be putting chains on your walls and stuff. Yeah. Season. He is Sauron. <sighs> Seize him. What do you know, of Sauron, sir? All along. You think seizing him will work? No, that was him. Mm. He is Sauron! It's too late. Cut him open. Bro, if he was able to keep you locked in a prison of his of your mind for weeks, you think he can't make these people all think he bleeds red blood? Oh my god. Kellabrimbar. You're so smart and yet so dumb. Get your hands off me! No! All that for D did not tell you he was never gonna get it? Mm. At least he'll be fast. Y'all know he's Calibrimbor ain't that strong. He's old. Finish the nine. And I will spare your city. No, he won't. No, he won't. But you're gonna do it anyway. Ooh, shiny. So shiny. Oh, enough of them. It's about to be a battle for real now. I didn't think the king was gonna send nobody. Okay, calm down. Ugh, why the spittle? You're so clean. Oh, the horsies, they don't deserve this. Can you leave them behind, please? Oh, Elrond. Well, we know you survive at least. Spoiler alert. Oh, the king. Something tells me he's not gonna make it. Any magic users here, even one. That's a great shot. Guys, you should be worried that the orcs aren't even trying to move. Yeah. If these were just orcs, they would be dumb, but they're being led by an elf, so. An elf who probably knows all your battle patterns. That was a Galadriel. You know she'd want you to take her out if you need to. You know she would. All we need is a sharp arrow, right. Right to Adar. That's all you need to take out Adar. Aaron dear, where are you? Cowards. But look at the light, how it ends right where they start. What are we treating now? You are a courtier. More suited to wielding a scroll than a sword. You've never seen me wield either. Period. Give me what I need to defeat him and let us all be rid of him. Is no. it not you that has done his bidding by laying siege to- Period, dummy! It belongs to the deceiver now, as does every elf within its wall. Not Lord Celebrimbor. It was Celebrimbor himself who welcomed the Yeah, song. he did. It is an earnest offer. I suggest you take it. I don't give a damn Please about your suggestions. To me. Yeah, okay, like the way you took him out the first time? Not before you have painted the sands of the Glanduin black with the blood of your kin. Exactly. Are you prepared to spend their lives so freely? Mm. Adar. Are you any better than Sauron, if that's the case? Are they? Hmm, think for yourselves. I will meet you there. With her head on a pike. I don't like it anymore anyways. If that is to be the way of things, I should like to bid her farewell. He's unarmed. Hmm, <laughs> is he? He's so mad. He's like, you were supposed to take the bait. 
He took something off of his cloak, though. Go ahead and go meet him. He's like, I hate you. Period. Like, respectfully. One life for the future of elfdom. Gladulate that. Oh. Oh, I didn't realize y'all was friend friends. <laughs> They're all watching like, ooh, it's getting spicy. Y'all can say goodbye a little longer. We don't mind. Most entertainment we've had in weeks. Quo is nelling wife in Nagothrin. Ana Eglai ni estu itu lietho bien. Kirvina rau ada. I hope the dwarves show up. Meantime, I will ensure that Eregion's walls hold for one more night. We love it, Elrond. I'm, that is the smart. I'm so glad. So many times in things, situations like this, shows like this, you have them do the emotional thing and I get it, but this is a battle. I'm sorry. Galadriel, she chose to give herself up. At this moment, the great tale of our age is being written. You better give him a speech. To decide whether it'll end in tragedy. Elrond's like, I know my girl's very wiry. She let herself get cuffed. The elves cannot defeat him. They need our help. Not without us. Yeah. Puff out your chest. You're all gonna die. By stoking our greed, he can turn our hearts to ash. Worked on your dad, sadly. As Look at him sitting with his horde like an old dragon. Is a force stronger than any sorcery. Deeper. Than the bones of the earth. Sir, you should have been a poet. What you doing being a prince? With her friends. It's like we don't really know the elves, but sure. Okay, that we know. Yeah. Hurry up. Enough cheering. Let's go. We march for Y'all fight for what you need to. Let your daddy hide in his little room with his gold. Can't eat gold. Gold don't keep you warm at night. This horse. Nope. 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 Oh. You? Oh. Yeah, that's a riverbed. You better go, Elrond. Let them know. I may look soft, but I'm not. Okay, you die. Oh, he had a name, Zor. Who's guts? That was for the horse. Guano. Period. We swear at you my own language. <laughs> that was petty, Elrond, but it's hot. Oh, this is why I didn't want the horses to go with them. <laughs> the horse didn't do nothing. Who's the person barking out orders? I need to just give them two chops to the throat. Many Uruk are dying. Hmm. What are your orders, Lord Father? Shall we sound the retreat? No. We will all die here. And by all, I mean you. At any cost. I die! Oh, no other long... Lord Father, calling you by your government name. Hmm. Too much to let you become Sauron's slaves. So death is, well, I guess, her son. But also, didn't you say you took Sauron out? Torbat! Did she escape? Did she lose your hostage? Oopsies! She's slippery. Why are you all so... This is why y'all don't win in life. So much inner violence. You should be high-fiving each other. You should be saying things like, hey. Be like, you know, good job, buddy. Those five strands of hair are definitely slain today. Oh, never mind. I was going to say, in a couple episodes ago, they were able to smell the elves. So they can't smell her, but I'm guessing it's because of the clothes? Galadriel, girl. You got me clenched, girl. I need you out. You got me clenched. And I don't even like your character like that. Look at that pretty hair. <laughs> Let's not ask questions. Run! I run the ears at you, babe. Is that you, baby? Let's go! Whatever force it was that brought you here, soldier, I am grateful for it. 
wasn't about you, but okay. Try to move against him now. The cost will be your life. She's right. It's true. Don't don't die like and this. A true fight with Adar will come later. It's true. Like how frustrating would it be if you die and you don't even get like one arrow into him? It's not worth it. Unless you were like that good of a sniper, you know? Oh, friendship. Let's do that. Now what? What's your father done? He's gonna take. He's gonna lose that beast. Disa. I she, don't know. But she sent me to find you. She says you have to recall the army. And what about Elrond? <sighs> this is a hard one. And cousin Doom might not be here when you return. Damn. Oh, this is Sophie's choice. Can you split the army? But that's why Sauron was smiling when he left, because he knew that Balrog was awake and it would keep the elves busy. All our sufferings will be worth it. Our suffering. Exactly. Treating you like... Like you've treated countless others. Exactly. Please don't try to humanize yourself. Like it's not going to work. Treated me. I don't give a damn. Then take it you out on Morgoth. You be tortured at the hands of a god. <laughs> you deserved it, clearly. I see. <laughs> Does it end in fire? <laughs> For what he wished to destroy, I wished to perfect. You had two sides of the same insane coin. Pain almost became a reward. Oh God, this is now about you. Okay. A contest. Mm. To see whose will was the might. Sure, sure. But after all that, you would still choose to inflict the same. Period. So stop. Not I. Sure, sure. He's gaslighting you again, by the way. I am but a victim of your obstinacy. <laughs> wow, that is narcissism 101, people. The true author of it. Wow, that is how narcissism works, guys. In case you didn't know, that's what narcissism is. So don't even try. Just just don't even try, Celebrim Board. It's over. You truly are the great deceiver. Mm. You can deceive even yourself. Right? The delusion. Delulu is the Salulu. Finish them. Meanie. And what's crazy to me, Celebrim Board, is if you actually believe that this man is going to spare the Elven City... You might as well have just, anyway. Okay, now that's some hot marksmanship. It's not enough, but it's hot. Makes the girl want to take up archery and stuff. Better go, Elrond. I'm so sorry you're not going to have backup, bro. I feel so bad because Durin, it's not his fault. He can't, he has no choice. Yeah, those are, they're mithril. They're not going to burn. Also, Sauron's blood. Remember? He poured his blood into every ring. I give him props for at least, you know, having the will to try to fight till the end. Bro, you have to cut your hand off. I'm pretty sure those are made of mithril. You like dislocating your thumb? I don't like this angle of the shot. Yep. He's gonna he's gonna smash his hand. Or he's gonna cut it off. He's gonna cut it off. But hey, you can't finish the rings if you ain't got finger. Just do it quick. One swipe, real quick. All your strength. If you're gonna do it, don't linger. It's the mighty hand. Or steps. Bro, can you move faster? Yeah. Second time you've been knocked out. Also, those have Sauron's blood. He can call those things like a bloodhound. What do you mean? Release him. That's right, Galadriel. Let Rimbor. Hurry up. The story needs to come quickly. From the beginning, a part of me mm. knew. It's true. A part of me saw that I, I wanted. That's what he held, yeah. He did manipulate you. But you did let him. It must be you. He will realize what has happened. He will come for the rings. I will ensure it is some time before that comes to pass. Yeah, he's kind of done. Save anyone in the city you can. Hurry. We don't have to- you'll go! And he will not be alone. Now y'all remember your jobs. Go, Galadriel. I'm so dead ass. I wasn't strong enough. There, there. Bye, bye. Strong enough. Run. There might not be anyone in Middle Earth who is. Actually, there's these little creatures called hobbits. You ought to look them up. That it is not strength. 
but overcomes darkness. Respectfully, do we have time for this speech? Okay, let's go quickly. Well, hurry up because these elves are gonna get cooked because there's no dwarves coming. All darkness must flee. Great. It's beautiful. Can we go? And you're still standing there. This is why you are so useless. Move! How many torch arrows do you have left? Enough to do my part. All I need is a clear line of sight. Follow me. Enough! Telling you, man, Elrond's never been hotter. I don't heat. I knew it. I'm like, I don't see her. Oh, she said thanks for the ammo. And honestly, if she's your trick shot, why was she not in front of you where you could protect her? Aim true, since it's the only shot you got. I'm glad you made it worth it, sis. You did good, sis. I don't remember your name, but thank you. Damn! Where'd that even come from? We will kill our own kind. Send him in. And y'all are following this. Y'all are not realizing he's just as bad as Sauron. In fact, worse, because he's lying and saying that he loves you while he's doing it. Hey, Aaron, dear. Hey, baby. Please be careful. I can't lose you, okay? The orcs. They're fleeing. Not for the reason you think. The troll. I forgot about him. You shall not find them here. Why would you tell him that? You know he can reach into your mind, right? Dathoui. He'll make quick work of them. You think it was only you who put yourself in my power? Hmm. Like this man kept you in an enchantment for weeks and you think a few swords? Oh my god, boy. Dude, toss yourself out the tower and do yourself a favor. I'm so sorry. He's just going to get in your head. You will give me the dying. I will not. <laughs> He's gonna toss orcs at you. Where's Legolas? in the balls. <laughs> Good work, Elrond. Yeah, get mad at the machine. Oh no, he's probably gonna ram it. Never mind. Right in the Achilles. Right in the Achilles. No, the horse didn't do anything. Ooh, Elven tricks. Come on, every dear. Right in the eye. Right in the eye. Come on. He said, that's a toothpick, girl. Was that the balls? You kind of deserve it, though. That's a horrible sound. But I'm glad you died happy. You should not be here. The king's place is wherever the need is great. You're not making it out of this. I can feel it. Now what? What fresh hell? We'll be your Gisha. Yeah, Boomy's like, you know what? Um, I'm not feeling this. A lot of us have died. You be sacrificing us. This is not feeling like a winning battle at all, you know? This was so fun to be an orc extra, though. So many of them. All right, Dawn. The dwarves. The dwarves are coming. They're not. Look to the north. They're not. It's okay. It's okay. You didn't know... Durin sends his, his condolences, but his dad is freaking crazy. There must be some mistake. Why would he lie on his deathbed? Durin will come. He won't. But it's not for the reasons you think. Carolina! You tried. You really Durin. did try, Elrond. Dagrana! Please save Aaron. Oh my god, there's like eight of them. Oh my god. No, this is so unfair. Durin will come. Oh, 
Elrond, I'm sorry, boo. It's not what you think. This is the worst miscommunication trope. It's not even on lovers, it's like friends. It's worse. Oh God. Okay, King, you better go out in a blaze of glory. Ah, oh, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. No, I knew it. No, I knew he wasn't gonna make it. Why did it have to be him? The one black elf. You had to take him out, huh? All that and Sauron is long gone. He doesn't even have the ring. I've got our house, Lady Otis. That's true. You couldn't have given that mercy to... Okay. Well, that did not go at all the way we wanted now, did it? <laughs> that was a rough episode, but with a with a name like Destined to Die or Doomed to Die, I mean, I didn't really expect it to be warm and fuzzy in the least. About the only win, and we know it's temporary that is out there right now, is that Galadriel got the rings out of Eregion, but how far can she get? And again, she doesn't know that those rings are literally forged with Sauron's blood, so I'm pretty sure he can seek that stuff out like a missile and figure out wherever it happens to be. Although he did seem to be, he kept asking, Celebrimbor to get, give it to him. So maybe he can't, maybe there are some limitations to what he's able to do with that. But wow, what a dark episode, but this is the way it goes. You know, this, this <laughs> Tolkien was not about happy endings at all. <laughs> The happiest Tolkien ever was, was when he created the Shire. That was it. The rest, doom, gloom, darkness, death. Oh my gosh, but anyhow, yeah, I think, you know, highlights of this episode, I mean, we'll talk about the doors for a second. We see that the plan that Disa said, of course, Queen, saying that basically they need to stand their ground and not move about the digging. And eventually when the elves, or sorry, when the dwarves see that the king is willing to sacrifice them over a dig, they'll know that he's lost his mind and they'll join us. And then, you know, we can overthrow him. And so we see that that's exactly what happened. Dar Narvi, who is like the, I guess you could say one of the second in line there, he was basically saying to the king, like, you're wanting us to try to keep pushing for a dig. Your son's down there, your daughter-in-law, like you're gonna risk their lives for, for money, right? And the way he said it, there's millions of all this wealth that we're losing. Wealth over lives, sir? And again, you never leave the mountain. Where are you gonna spend it? <laughs> but anyways, so thankfully that's all Narvi needed to see to realize that, yeah, the ring has made him go crazy. The dwarves all decided to join. And just in time, we see Elrond shows up and Elrond's like, look, bro, I need your help. Like, we need you to bring your army because it's not gonna be enough of us. And, you know, if they take down a Regian, you guys will be next. Like, make no mistake, it's not gonna end with them. So, uh, of course, he was asking more as a friend than anything else, but we see that Durin did want to help him, and he definitely sees how dangerous the rings are, especially now that he sees what they did to his father. But of course, that crazy old man, or crazy old dwarf in this case, we see that unfortunately his drive, the ring is driving him. The ring is playing into his greed. It's whispering in his ear and he cannot ignore it. So he went and took his ax and basically is planning to go down there and dig himself. And we all know that Balrog is already awake. Balrog's already given a warning shot to Disa, said, leave me alone. Don't come down to my house. You know, I did not send for you. Do not come for me. So yeah, so basically we see at the last minute, we're suited up, we're ready to go and Narvi comes up because Disa sent him and basically said, look, I know your friends need help, but the reality is if your dad goes and wakes up Balrog, which I don't even know if they know who Balrog is, but we all know Balrog is a big sum of up. He's a bad mamma jamma. It took a full wizard to take that thing out. Yeah. They're like, if he gets loose, he gonna whip, wipe out every last dwarf in here and he's gonna rip the crap out of Khazad-dûm. So we need to go. If that's what it takes to stop your dad as an army, then that's what we need to do. Or be prepared that if your dad does wake up Balrog, we can at least somehow fight him back. So like I said in the episode, Sophie's choice, I felt so bad for Durin because I know he like loves Elrond like a brother, but like that, what do you do? Like he is the future ruler. His kids are there, his family, like 
You're asking him to leave for a war where they're going to lose. Let's be real. They're going to lose a good chunk of their army. And then on the chance that maybe, maybe possibly his dad will be subdued and Balrog won't come up and kill everybody. Like it was an impossible choice, honestly, but I can't blame Durin because the elves would have done the same thing. The men would have done the same thing. I don't know of a single race that wouldn't have chosen to protect their own first before trying to go out and help somebody else. Like that's just the way communities work. So yeah, I feel for him. I wish she'd had time to send word. That's the part that made me sad was that it doesn't seem like there was any time for Durin to send a messenger to tell the reason that he couldn't go. But I mean, I don't really think at that point that Elrond would have been willing to hear it. Like, I think he was just like, at that point, so tired and adrenaline rushed out that I don't think he would have heard anything. But anyway, I really felt for poor Durin, you know, that was a really hard choice. And I know that it made him sick to have to make it. And I think what he's probably hoping is that he can get this situation done with his dad and then try to get out there. But I think it's going to be too late, unfortunately. Like, Eregion is gone, right? Like, we can already say that. Eregion was a write-off from the second the orcs started to attack. So that's one thing that Adar had completely right when he was talking to Elrond, when he said, like, it's over, right? He's like, Sauron already has the elves under his control in there. It's done. The second they let him into Eregion, it was over for them. So, I mean, it's sad and I understand that, you know, all the elves had every reason to try to fight for their own that are in there because there's a lot of innocent people. But yeah, he did have a point. So anyways, that was the elves essentially. They're now having to go and I guess figure out what they're gonna have to do to hold that old man down and get the ring off of him. And probably I'm gonna have to lock him up because I mean, the ring we already know kind of, it, once it gets inside someone's system, they never stop obsessing over it, right? Like even though they're gonna take that ring off, Durin is going to be obsessed with getting it back. So I feel like they're going to have to lock him up, which is going to break Durin Jr.'s heart, but it's it's what has to be done. But anyhow, that is the dwarves. And yeah, Disa was such a badass. I love seeing her with a little weapon. That was so cool. Anyway, uh, so that was the dwarves back in... Oh gosh, where else did we go? Um, yeah, I guess we'll just go into the battlefront. We see that Elrond and all the elves do show up. They did their best to try to protect the city and give a little bit of hope to the elves that were in Eregion, who of course were battling a losing battle. Of course, Sauron made sure that they waited to the very last minute to do any type. I mean, the thing is, I'm sure Sauron probably anticipated 90% of what Adar was going to do, but obviously he did nothing to stop that and nothing to help the elves stop that either because he wants Eregion to fall. And anyways, we see that the elves meet up on the orcs and Adar does not want to necessarily battle at this point, right? He brings Galadriel because he knows that Galadriel and Elrond are close and he hopes that it's going to be like an emotional manipulation for Elrond to do what he wants him to do, which is to give him the ring. And Elrond initially says no, which I appreciate, although I really wish he hadn't brought the ring. Like the fact that he did bring it with him, I was like, bro, I feel like what he should have done is left it with his mentor back in Linden, right? Because we know his mentor, under like he's got his own draw to the ring. So I feel like that would have been a safer bet was to keep it there. But in the same respects, now looking back, it's probably a good thing he didn't leave any more rings over there because knowing Adar, he would have headed to Linden next. So anyway, we see that he says, I will trade Galadriel's life for the ring. He's like, I just want to end this. I want to go in there. I want to take out Sauron once, once and for all, and then we'll figure out our beef later. But my thing is we both want Sauron done. So why don't we work together? And basically, of course, Elrond doesn't want to give this to a dark orc or a dark elf, basically, right? Like he doesn't want to do that. So anyways, he gives her a means, to, uh, Galadriel, a means to escape. And he's like, you know what? We'll get out in the battlefield. We'll see who's in the victor at that point. And whoever's winning, then we'll, we'll, we'll revisit this, this potential trade. And of course we see that it doesn't work out because A, Galadriel escapes and B, poor Elrond thought that the dwarves were coming, which is an advantage that obviously the dwar um, the orcs didn't know would potentially be a thing. So he went in on a gamble, bless him. And you know, it just didn't work out. Like he said, you know, if we can just maintain the walls until the dwarves arrive, we'll have done enough damage to push the orcs back, right? And they did, like, they really did push. The elves did their best. They were definitely outnumbered. They took so many casualties. It was super sad to see. But Elrond is a little badass. Like, I really like how, you know, Adar was like, oh, you look more like a scared pretty boy. You look too much like a scholar to be out here. He's like, bro, you've never seen me wield a pen or a sword. So don't talk about me. Keep my name out your mouth. And good thing, because Elrond was a badass out there. Like, he really did hold his own for, for a man that's never seen battle, right? Because if you remember back to season one, 
he was a kid when the first battle against Morgoth happened, right? So this is his first actual active battle. And I think he did pretty darn good. At least I'm pretty sure that's what, um, if I remember correctly. But anyways, um, as we see, they all worked really, really hard, even managed to take down a damn hill troll. But in the end, there's just too many of them. Like there's just too many orcs. And even though some of the orcs are definitely starting to question whether or not Adar really has their best interest in heart, and this is not just a grudge between him and Sauron, it wasn't enough, right? There's still too many orcs that were still willing to follow him to do whatever. And so, yeah, we we lost Aaron, dear guys. I'm ready to flip a table. Why? Why do we lose the one black elf? No, I'm starting to think this is personal, guys. Seriously, the one black elf, you had to take him out, and he had to be taken out by his hater? Nah, that ticks me off. I mean, yes, in a way, I really wish he hadn't gone for Eddar. I know that he went to him, and it's very fitting that afterwards, it wasn't to him, but when he said it to Elrond, where he's like, you don't go into battle angry, and it's true. Like, Adar was just seeing red when he saw, sorry, uh, Erendir was seeing red as soon as he saw Adar, and unfortunately, he just didn't fight smart. But anyway, I mean, he was still breathing when Adar left him, but he stuck him two really good times, so I don't know, I don't know. I pray he survives. I'll be so mad if we lose the one black elf. Like, I'm mad, guys. We lost the Asian elf, now the black elf. Like, it's starting to feel personal, guys. <laughs> I'm half kidding, I'm half kidding. Anyway, um, hopefully he survived, but it's not looking good. If he doesn't get medical attention, like, immediately, I, I don't see him surviving. But anyhow, um, we see that they faced off again. Adar went straight for Elrond and basically knew that Elrond had the ring on him. So he took it back and basically said, hey, this is your gamble and it didn't work out for you. So he's got the ring and he's headed towards the city. And we'll see what happens because I do think as usual, Adar, he's underestimating Sauron greatly, greatly. And anyways, I'm pretty sure by the time he gets in there, Sauron's gonna be gone though. I don't see any reason. Sauron has no reason to stay in Eregion. He's done what he needed to do. The rings aren't in, in Eregion anymore. That's number one. And he wanted it destroyed, it's destroyed. So he's leaving. He has no reason to face off against Adar at this point, unless he wants to take him out and take over the orcs again, which I don't know will work or not, but we'll see. So that was basically the absolutely painful battle. The walls are down. Like I said, Oregon is finished. And as the title said, doomed to die, like the Oregon was finished. Oregon was finished the second the, the assault started, unfortunately. So RIP to all those elves and that beautiful, beautiful city. I um, mean, they stood for a long time, but unfortunately that overestimation, or sorry, that underestimation, that overzealousness is what I was trying to say. Like elves, have always considered themselves the top of the food chain in Middle Earth, and they just thought that there was no one who would ever be able to take them down, and that's one of the reasons why Iregian fell as well, is that hubris that they had. So anyhow, that was sad. And then the last kind of thing that we had was poor, poor Celebrimbor. <laughs> poor, poor Celebrimbor. Yeah, he has been working day, night, without sleep, without food, like literally being, like you can see that he's been literally wasting away under the stress of making these rings. And we see that as he's getting further and further, and I feel like it was a combination of two things. One, Sauron was distracted a bit with, you know, what was going on with the war. Like he had to make sure that no matter what happened, at least the space for Celebrimbor stayed relatively unscathed because he needed him to keep working. But also I just think that at times he just got distracted, right? There's a lot going on. But I think also as Celebrimbor's mind got more and more fatigued and his body got fatigued, I think that that's the other reason that the illusion started to get cracks. We see moments would happen where Celebrimbor would see the reality. And then as soon as he would start to focus on it, I'm thinking something probably alerted Sauron and Sauron would come in and like, you know, fix it and patch it up and distract him enough to get him to stop looking at it. And anyways, eventually, thankfully, because Celebrimbor is incredibly smart, and observant, he started to realize that some things were just not making sense. And eventually he figured out that everything he was in was effectively the matrix, right? He basically figured out that he was in the matrix, that there were loops, there was glitches, and there were patterns. And he's like, that's not normal. Obviously the same mouse does not walk by and do the exact same thing every three hours, right? Like that's not natural behavior. And then we saw him marking the candlestick, which I didn't know what he was doing at first, but then of course, like he realized Hours have gone by and the candle has not changed. It just sits there flickering exactly the same. So he started to realize that, okay, there is sorcery happening here. I am 
I'm not seeing the reality. And so eventually he tries to challenge Sauron and he's like, I realize now he's like, as he said, a messenger for an emissary from Valar would never do this. He would never play with someone's mind like this. So who are you really? And then of course, at this point, Sauron's like, I ain't got time for this anymore. <laughs> I, I ain't got time. Like, you know, the amount of work it takes to just build these manipulations for you, especially when we saw at this point, the rings were like 95% done. So he was basically like, look, fine. You know, since you want to know, I'll show you. If you want the truth, I'll give it to you. I mean, I was trying to help you, bro, because I need this done. But you want to see the chaos? See the chaos, right? And so we see that he does finally drop the glamour and he realizes, A, that... Sauron's blood is in every single one of the rings. He thought he was pouring in Mithril, but he was actually pouring in Sauron's blood. And as we know, well, some of you may know, spoiler alert, it's that factor that creates the ability for Sauron to control the men. Because out of all the races, I feel like the men definitely got the shortest end of the stick as far as the negative effects of having those rings. <laughs> so anyway, so Celebrimbor sees the truth and it's devastating and he sees himself and he realizes that he's even been hurt because obviously one of the fireballs hit his workshop and he was so enchanted that he didn't even realize. And as I was saying in the episode, like, damn, like Sauron, I want to stand, but you know, you're just so evil. But if you weren't so evil, I'd have to stand because the amount of magic that it took to not only keep that illusion unwavering through all that chaos, but also to keep Celebrimbor from noticing that he was hurt is insane. Like that's terrifying, actually. His magical abilities are nothing short of terrifying. So anyway, so Celebrimbor, of course, you know, once he realizes what's happened, he's horrified, right? He never thought in a million years that he would be helping Sauron of all people. And you know, of course he tries to leave, but Sauron has already weaved his web throughout all of Aregion, or at least the people that are closest to Celebrimbor, right? He's telling that ditz of a woman, oh yeah, he's lost his mind. He thinks he's hallucinating. He doesn't care what's happening. So anything he says is going to be crazy. He made sure Celebrimbor was hidden away while the city was falling apart, making people lose faith in him. So Again, the manipulation had levels, levels upon levels. And so by the time poor Celebrimbor came to, it was too late. Like he was trying to talk to people. And of course he sounded crazy, right? Of course he sounded, and like that's the part that bothered me so much in that confrontation he was having at the wall where he's talking to, what was her name? Oh, the ditz, I don't remember her name, but anyways. And he's saying, oh, cut him open, see that his blood's blood. I'm like, sir, you've been living in illusion for weeks. You think he can't mind trick a few people into seeing red blood? What? Like, that is not a good, you need to think of a better test, bro. <laughs> you know, do something to make him really show his hand. But it was too late at that point. So anyways, I think that's when he really realized finally that he was completely outplayed and it was just too late for him to come to the realization. And the fact that he took that ditz out, like I've been saying the poor girl, I'm like, this is what happens, ladies. You can't let men blind you like that. Cause you see, you see what the men did. You see what the man did to her? Tossed her over like she was nothing. Get axed in the face by an orc. Rudeness, nothing. Not a semblance of care for that woman after all the simping she did. So let it be a lesson. But anyhow, so of course this just made him look bad and it, it took a lot of the faith of the elves out of him. But we see that after that, Sauron basically says, look, I'm kind of out of trying to like, you know, convince you that you're doing some great feat or some great act. I'm going to get down to straight, straight up blackmail at this point. He's like, you're either going to finish those rings or I'm going to let this whole city fall. But again, as I said, what saddens me about Killer is that I get it. Like, I understand that because he was the lord of that, of that city, he couldn't just give up per se. Like if there was a sliver of hope, I understand him thinking if there's any possible way I can save these people, save this town, I should try. But the other part of me is like, bro, what makes you think that if he let all this happen, he's going to, how, how is he going to spare the city? How's little old Sauron going to go out there and take on that army of orcs when they took him out the first, like, or took out his body the first time? Like, come on now, sir. Like, you should know he don't want a Regian to stand. So yeah, I'm sorry. If I had been Celebrimbo, I would sort of toss myself over that wall, just like that girl, just followed her right over and asked the orc to go ahead and hit me. Although I feel like Sauron probably would have done something to stop it from happening. But all the same, like I would have ended it. Like as soon as he was left alone, I would have been like, I'm not finishing the rings and I'm taking myself out. Forget it. He can finish the rings himself. 
if he's so damn so uh, obsessed with it. But anyhow, I understand. I, I, I just say that, you know, I say that. But I mean, if I was in his position where so many lives were in my hands, I suppose I'd probably have to, like I said, try at least to try to do something to negotiate for the lives and the safety. But anyhow, he finishes up the rings as we see, but he realizes he does not want to give them to Sauron. He tries to burn them in the furnace or in the forge, but I'm like, bro, you should know that those don't burn. They've got mithril in them. You've already seen that mithril don't burn the way that you want it to. But obviously it's Sauron's blood that's keeping those rings from, from melting, right? So once he realizes he can't destroy them, he puts them into a pouch and he tries to escape. He sacrifices his thumb to get out of the cuffs because he's been chained to his workstation. And uh, again, I don't know why this man be walking around looking slowly like there's a whole war going on. He's just casually strolling. He gets knocked out and when he comes to he almost gets taken back to the lab, but we or to the workshop, but we see that Galadriel finally shows up and basically lets them know that what he's saying is true, that Sauron really is in the city and that poor Celebrimbor has been effectively enslaved by him. And actually, before I get to that conversation, I thought it was very interesting, the conversation between Celebrimbor and Sauron. Like that whole scene when he's sitting there, you know, finishing up the rings and Sauron is in there and trying to, of course, make it seem like he's a very good person, right? He's like, I don't know why you're even upset with me. Like, I'm trying to like save everybody. And like, you're making me out like to be a bad person because I like made a few pretty pictures for you for the last couple of weeks. Like just that whole conversation, people, if you don't want to know, if, you, if you're unsure of what gaslighting and narcissism looks like, that was a one-on-one -on -one perfect class in what gaslighting and narcissists look like. They couldn't have scripted it better for what a conversation is like with a narcissist. Narcissists never see themselves in the wrong. There's never any blame. There's never any accountability. They will take anything they did, like their direct, their direct fault. They will take that and somehow twist it and make it anybody else's fault but theirs. And you saw how he did that to Kella Brimbor, right? telling Celebrimbor that his enslavement and torture was his own fault. Because if he had just basically rolled over and did what Sauron wanted, he wouldn't have had to go to those lengths to make him do it. That, that's it, right? And even when Celebrimbor's like, um, you're telling me that I should feel like you understand me because Morgoth tortured you, but you went in turn and you're doing the same thing to countless other people. And he's just kind of like, yeah, well, you know, um, I, I do understand. And like, I, you made me do it. That's the only reason I'm doing it is you made me do it. Right? Like just, and I just love how in the end, Calibrimbor's like, wow, like you really are the great deceiver because you got yourself deceived. Like you, Delulu is the Salulu for you. You are completely in your own little universe. Right? And we see that, of course, that made Sauron a little bit angry because he realized that that whole narcissistic garbage wasn't working, but that is exactly how it is to talk to a narcissist people. I don't bother. Like when I meet people who have been like that, I don't even try to conversate with them because they're crazy. They're literally, there's, there's just, mm, the levels of delusion are infinite, infinite. So anyway, I just thought that was very interesting. The way that was played was so accurate and true to life. But anyhow, coming back to Celebrimbor and Galadriel, they have a chat. It's way too long. I'm sorry, but I'm like, bro, with everything that's going on right now, I don't think y'all have the time to be having this conversation. But anyway, in the end, she's like, Celebrimbor, you should go with the rings. And Celebrimbor's like, bro, I can't go. And it's so true. Like at this point, the man hasn't eaten or drank or slept in days or weeks. He's been hurt. Like there's no way he's making it six feet from, <laughs> from Moregian before he's going to get caught. So he's like, no, you have to go. You can take it. I will stay here. I will keep Sauron distracted long enough for you to actually make some distance from this place. It's the only thing that'll work. And then he basically said, look, this is my city. I'm the Lord. What kind of a Lord am I if I run away? Like I should be here, you know, basically I should fall with the city if it falls. So they say their goodbyes and you know, the guards are like, don't worry, we're gonna have his back. We're gonna take care of him. And they do take him back. And we see that Sauron is looking around the workshop, which I'm like, that's a little bit, Anyways, uh, he's thinking maybe that if Celebrimbor left, at least he left the rings. And of course, Celebrimbor's like, dumb idiots. Like, you're not going to find them here. I'm like, bro, the way I would have lied. You want to buy time for Galadriel? I'll be like, they're hidden around. They're hidden around the workshop. It's like a scavenger hunt. <laughs> you know? If you find them, you get a prize. Like, I don't know. I would have told him I spread the rings all across, all across Eregion. And he's got to find them before the whole city falls. 
go, right? Like you could have sent him on a nice, good wild goose chase. Or if he was like, you're gonna bring them to me, I'm like, okay, I would have led him up, down, all around, through the sewers, through everywhere. See how long it takes before he figures out that I'm lying through my ass. You could have done more, bro, but just be like, you're not gonna find them here. So anyways, uh, at that point, we see that he tries once again, stupidly to arrest Sauron. Again, forgetting this man kept you trapped in a magical illusion so strong that you didn't see your own city falling around you. You thought that your poor little guards were gonna be able to put handcuffs on this man? Yeah. Anyway, Sauron reminded him once again that he's a super, super magic guy and takes out the men in a matter of seconds. And then he's basically, and of course he's doing the very, um, I, I kind of like the line though, when he does a whole lot, not even like, where are they? He's like, you will bring me the nine rings, right? He's trying to put that whole, I am telling you what you're gonna do and you're gonna do it. So I'm not sure we ended on Celebrimbor looking extraordinarily terrified as he should. And we'll see whether or not he breaks. Also, as I said, I'm pretty sure Sauron has ways to get into your mind. So I feel like even if Celebrimbor does try to keep his mouth shut, he probably will give up the fact that Galadriel has the rings, but he won't know where Galadriel went. So that's as much as, that's as much as Sauron will probably find out is that it's Galadriel that has the rings. But we all know that, you know, at some point he will find them. But yeah, that's how we ended that. And yeah. Probably by Celebrimbor, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know, as I said, as morbid as it sounds, if I were him, I'd just pitch myself out the tower window. Cause I mean, the city's gone. The people you care about are gone. You went and made the most evil rings ever. And let's be real, Sauron is probably going to take you out anyways. And the fact that he keeps saying, I'm gonna tell everybody that we did this. Like, thanks bro, but can you not co-sign my name on world domination? Like poor Celebrimbor is like, please don't put me in the notebook of history for helping you with that. But Anyhow, so yeah, that's how we ended with those two. And we'll have to see whether or not Kellen Brimbor actually does get to walk away or if Sauron is going to end it right there and then. So that's pretty much the whole episode, really. We didn't have much else, but it was a lot. As I said, a lot of, it, there was no highlights, no good moments, <laughs> really. There was nothing that was like, a, oh, that's good. I mean, there was a great, the, the battle scenes, the epicness of the battle scenes, like, Amazon made sure the budget was well spent. I love it. It's definitely giving Lord of the Rings scale. And I think they did a great job with all of that. I love the action sequences, but yeah, the overall theme was definitely doom and gloomy. Even when the sun rose at the end of the episode, I was like, there is nothing to celebrate. <laughs> So yeah, we have one episode left. I really don't know how we're gonna wrap this season up. At this point, I just have one wish list, and that's that Aaron Deer somehow survived. I just really want him to survive. We got the announcement that the show is gonna go for five seasons. So I just really hope that we get Aaron Deer for at least a couple more, please. I mean, if he left, if the if the character is gone, I don't know if it's just because they don't feel like there's more for him to do, or maybe the actor maybe wanted to move away from it. But I'm really hoping that we do get more of him. I'm really sad if we lose him. But yeah, there's still so much more to deal with. You still have Numenor and the humans that are still out there kind of in the, in the outset of all of this. And I'm really wondering what's gonna happen underneath the mountain. Are we gonna meet Balrog or is he just gonna continue to be a rumbling presence at the bottom of the mountain? Yeah, a lot of things to potentially at least I don't know, I don't wanna say wrap up because we've got so much more story to tell, but I am interested to see how they're gonna just kind of put a pin in this season. So I'm looking forward to next week, but I enjoyed this episode a lot and I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.